Good morning. We welcome you today to worship those who are here. We're glad that you are here joining us in person and those who are joining us online. We're glad that you're able to join with us as well. I want to share a few announcements of happenings in the church. First and foremost, um, we're wanting to let people know about our small group opportunities that we have on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. We have the pastoral Bible study. We're looking at the book of Philippians. And if you want to look at that and join us, you can do it via in-person or Zoom. And then at 7 o'clock, we've got a great group that's meeting to read the Bible in a year. And there's still time to read the Bible in a year um, that you can catch up and you'll be with each other. So if you want to join in person or via Zoom, let us know. This week uh, is the last, oh, we have another week, sorry, but uh, the youth are selling soup for us. And it is part of their mission trip that they're going to Philly this summer, Lord willing. They're planning on it and they are raising funds for that. And so if you need soup, um, that will be available on February 7th. Put your order in by next Sunday. You can call the office, email the office, or you'll see the uh, order for the soup in the emails that we send out. But this is a great way to um, honor the youth of our church. Just to let you know, this week the police department stopped by here and donated $250. Didn't want any soup for the kids to go and serve in Philadelphia. And we are grateful for that, so we give thanks to them. Also, uh, Bruce ha always has ShopRite cards available for you, and so make sure if you need those, you can stop in the office and pick those up, or you can pick them up today. And then we have been doing a fundraiser for Pampered Chef, and it ends at this month. If you have any questions about that, you can contact the office. We'll put the link back up on Facebook, and um, there are a uh, way for us to receive some money as well. But we're glad that we're able to come in and worship the Lord. We invite those that are at home to light their candle. And we light our candle here today to remind us that Christ is the light of the world and that God's presence is with us at all times. And so as we come into worship, we ask God to help us be aware of God's presence, that God would open our eyes, would open our hearts to the things that he has for us today. So will you stand as we begin our call to worship as Dave leads us? Our creating God is present in this time. Our worship is a simple note. Press on in our faith. Christ is calling us. God's Holy Spirit is at work. And our worship is holy May we please sing, Open Mine Eyes. Open mine eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands the wonderful 
You may be seated, please. As we go to the Lord in prayer, I invite you to just take a moment to center and focus yourself on the things of what God is speaking to you. We just sang silently, now I wait for thee, ready my God thy will to see. Open my ears, illuminate me, spirit divine. So take a moment just to ready your heart. The loving and courageous God, we thank you that you still speak to us. And God, if you called us to do something, it's because you have given us the ability and the strength and the courage to completion with your help, your resurrection power. God, when you call us to do things for you, remind us that your call is bigger than us. Lord, help us to forget what is behind us and focus on what lies ahead of us. May we look to you, the author and the finisher of our life. God, when we face difficulties, when we face challenges, when we are facing fear or pressing through pain, God, help us to look to you, to endure through your strength, so that we can give you the glory and honor. We thank you, O oh God, that we can come today to worship you and to lift up our voices in song, but also in prayer. And God, there are things that weigh heavy on our hearts, and you know what they are. But we just say them aloud at this time and ask that you would move in those situations. God, we thank you that you hear us when we call on to you. And today we lift up to you all those who are struggling and who are sick with COVID-19, that you would continue to be there with them in their healing process. God, be with those who are around them. God, give the doctors and the nurses and all those who are in the front line this, your strength your protection, your power. God, continue to help us look to you in all things and all ways during this time. Lord, we also are aware of the changes in our country, and we ask that you would be with our country in this time of transition. So God, continue to guide and lead all of our leaders. God, may they seek your face and your will. And God, help us as we navigate these times. Lord, there are things that we cannot control, and so we just ask that you would give us the wisdom to only do the things that we can do. Give us your spirit, though, if you are calling us to step out, to, to be bold and with courage to share your word. God, help us most of all to look to you and your son, Jesus, the one who gives us life, the one who calls us to come and follow him. And so, Jesus, we do follow you wholeheartedly. Sometimes we veer off the path, but you nudge us and bring us back. So forgive us for those times. Forgive us of our sin. And give you thanks that we can follow you in all of our ways, in all of our days, in all that we say and do. And so now we lift up our voices together and share in the prayer that Christ taught us to pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to invite Kelly to come and to share in music with us at this time.
today's scripture is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so, somehow, attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained all of this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. Only let us live up to what we have already attained, joined together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pastor Rich was able to share last week in the service and for all those who helped uh, during the worship service. And um, I got to join you via the internet. And so that was good that I knew that we were here together in spirit and invite you to continue to pray uh, um, for me. And um, as you have been, I give you thanks for, for my issues with my back. Well, 15 years ago, when I wasn't dealing with back issues, I lived in Ethiopia, and there was a big race called the Great Ethiopian Run, and it was a 10K that was sponsored by the Olympic runner Haile Gebrese, and it was a big race in the capital city of Addis Ababa, and over 25,000 people entered it, and they would run. And it would bring together aspiring runners and people who were looking to go to the Olympics and follow their hero, Haile Gabrasili. There were NGO workers who were there, and there were just locals who would join in this race. And I was amazed as I would see the whole runners um, preparing for this race. And some of them would be running without their shoes, and I was like, how do they do it? Well, the, um, the reason for the race was to raise money for AIDS, um, persons who were impacted by it in Africa and Ethiopia. And I had heard about this race and saw people preparing about it, and there were some of my colleagues, expats, who were signed up to, to run in it. And about a week before, I decided, well, I should be a part of this great Ethiopian run and do the 10K since I have never trained for it. And so we went on that day and was getting ready, and I made sure I was all, I could do this. And now, mind you, it's 10,000 feet higher than sea level in Addis Ababa, so you've got a little uh, disadvantage there if you're running and you're not quite used to it. But I thought I can do this. It's something that's easy, and it will go through the town. Well, when I started, I ran with a big group of people. And we went up hills, and we went down hills, and we went all around, and we went on flat places. Well, a little by little, I began to be towards the back. And I wasn't always running. In fact, I was just walking, or I would do a very slow motion jog, if you would. And I looked up, and I only saw that I was on kilometer number three, and I thought, oh, Lord, what have I done So I just kept looking for those mile markers or those kilometers. And I saw six, and I was like, yes, I've gone six kilometers. And I'd keep looking for it, and one time I didn't see the one number, and I was like, oh, my Lord, I'm going to, 
I'm not going to make it. Where is this? And then I see number eight on the horizon. And I'm like, I can do this. I was tired. I was sucking up air. And then I saw number nine, and I saw some of the surroundings around where I knew the finish line was. So I was like, I think I'm getting closer. I can do this. But I was really just walking going, I hope I make it. Finally, I got to the place where I could see the finish line, and there were people cheering me on. I didn't even know who they were, but they're like, you can do this. And there was a big hill that ran down to the finish line. So I was like, I'm giving it all that I have. And I pressed on, and I made it to the prize. The goal was to be there before they turned off the clock, to get the little medal that I participated in it, and I did that. But I had to look up and towards the finish line, towards those kilometer markers to keep me going. But you see, Paul is using that same metaphor of a race for life in Christ. And he's writing to his dear church in Philippi, and he's reminding them about life, and he tells them with great joy that there are things that they can do to live a full life. He talks about perseverance and overcoming difficulty challenges. You see, he knows about difficult challenges because he's in prison, and he's writing this letter. He's awaiting trial. And while he's in prison, it's different than what our prison system is like. People would have to bring food to the prisoners. They would have to take care of them if they were sick. And so he had a friend who was from the church who came and brought him good news, but also brought food and things to keep him healthy. And he says, regardless of your circumstances, strive for what God has called you to do. Strive what what God has planned for you. You see, Paul was an overcomer in his life, and he was telling the Christians there that they could be overcomers too, and that they can live the life that God has called them to and live it fully. And he says, there are a couple things that I know that you'll be able to overcome if you follow them. And the very first thing he says is, I want to know Christ. He said, you can overcome if you know Christ and the power of his resurrection and his suffering. For us today, we are still being encouraged by the book of Philippians, and we have the opportunity to be people who are overcomers in our life, regardless of what the circumstances are. All we have to do is to know Christ. To know Christ in a very day-to-day relationship, not just this head knowledge, not just this thing that says, oh, I go to church, check, but no, to know Christ on a daily basis. To share in the way that Jesus lived here on earth. To share even in his cross and death. And to share in the life that he's given us forever. We are to live in that and to know Christ in such a way that there is nothing in life or in death that can separate us from Christ. To know Christ is a heart issue. It keeps us alive. To know Christ is to say, yes, I look to Christ each and every day. And not just every day, but every hour and every minute. To know Christ also reminds us that we have this promise with us. That God is with us at all times. And to the end of the world. Do you, my friends, know Christ? Are there things in your life that you are looking at from a different perspective than what Christ would and it is not working for you? Paul says, I want to know Christ. And may that be our prayer. I want to know Christ. Are we cultivating time spent with Christ so that our relationship is growing and we are becoming closer to Christ? When we are close with Christ, those difficulties, 
those challenges that we face when we don't think that we can make it another day, we have this assurance that we can make it. We may not know how, but we do know that with Jesus, we can be overcomers. Because Jesus became victorious even over death. But sometimes we forget that we have this victorious overcoming way in which we can live when we live in Christ. So may we not lose our focus. And may we know Christ more and more each day. Paul says there's another way, dear church, how to live your life, and it's to keep your eyes and focus on Jesus. And he says, you see, we can focus on things, and that's what will drive us. But if we focus on Christ, we can be above those things that cause us to come and not look for Christ. Life in Christ is not just a 10K that you decide you're going to run one day. You decide that you're going to join in in this race, but it becomes a marathon following Jesus. Even when we don't know what's ahead, but we look for the next mile marker. With each step, we keep pressing forward. We live a life with Christ every day when we are moving forward and we keep our eyes focused on the big picture of Christ. You see, Paul, he was very educated. He was well-known. He had a good pedigree. And he thought he was doing good things for God as he was one of the Pharisees. But he said none of that mattered. The only thing that mattered was today, a living, present relationship with Jesus. And to keep moving forward instead of looking back on what he had and who he was. We too, we could have many things that we can boast and say, I've been going to church for umpteen years. I've been a part of this. I've done that. But Jesus says, and Paul reminds us, keep your eyes on the prize. We are to live it. And to keep our eyes above the circumstances. To press forward rather than going backwards. You see, Paul wasn't perfect. He had a lot of things that he had done in his past. But he persevered. And he became victorious in his living due to the fact that he persevered. Due to the fact that he said, forgetting what is behind me, I'm turning towards the mark, the goal. Perhaps there are things in your life that you can't forget those past mistakes you'll, that they come over and you play over them. When we live in that, we have a whole tough time persevering. Paul must have agonized at times over his role before he had his relationship with Christ because, you see, he persecuted the Christians at first. He was there when the first martyr had died. And I bet he agonized many times and grieved what he had done. But he had accepted God's grace and was able to move forward. You see, a person who perseveres and keeps their eyes focused on Christ moves past their mistakes. They learn how to forget some of the pain and the things that hold them back and say, it doesn't matter now. It's all Without perseverance, you and I will not know victory. We will not know what it means to overcome a life that we can have. Without hanging in there and following Christ on a daily basis, victory is impossible. But with perseverance, victory is certain. And we will live this life knowing that we are following God. The third thing that Paul says in this passage for us, and it's, demonstrated in his relationship with the church is that you and I are not alone in this race. He had the church helping him when he was in prison. He had people who came and brought the news to Paul about what was happening, happening to the church in Philippi. And he is there saying, I am with you. I'm cheering you on. And today that same message is there is that 
we are in this race together and we can do it. Perhaps you feel like giving up. Guess what? You're not alone. There are others who have gone before you. There are people who go with you now. And there will be people who will come in your lives to be there with you. Who is with you in this faith race? Paul reminds us that who we live life with does really matter. He says, follow my example and those who are living like me. Perhaps you need encouragement today in your race. Look for someone who's been there. May they encourage you. Maybe there are people who don't know what it means to have a Jesus-filled life, and they are looking for someone to share that with them. You may be that person for them. If you're having difficulties in a certain area, look for someone who follows Christ who might have gone through that same circumstance, those same troubles. Look for people who live their life for Jesus, people who love God and love others, people who persevere through the difficult times and go the extra mile, people who keep their eyes on Jesus. So where are you today in the race? Maybe you're on the sidelines thinking, oh, that could be a good race to join. You're there to cheer others on, but you don't want to join the race. Following Jesus means lacing up your shoes and entering into the race despite any doubts that you have, any feelings of inadequacy or insufficiency or whatever the excuses may be. You see, God is calling us to follow him. God doesn't need us to break a world record like an Olympic runner. All God is asking is that we say, yes, I want to follow Christ and start this race today. And so you can just say, God, here I am. I'm ready to run for you and with you. And through God's presence and power, you will be equipped to run this race. Maybe you're burnt out. Maybe you started out quick and you've been running and you've just become a little tired. Maybe you've missed the, the mile markers and you don't know where you are. God wants to give you strength and encouragement this day to keep on running. And through the Holy Spirit, God wants to give you that second wind to press on, to go through those difficult times. And to hold on to God in those times. And maybe you are running this race well and you are there. Don't forget, there are others who need you and to cheer you on and to help other fellow runners along the way. I was able to finish that 10K because... There were people that I didn't even know who said, you can do it. You can do it. They cheered me on. They did not know me, but they said I could do it. And we are not in this race alone. So may we help each other on the journey. No matter where you are in the race, may, we set your, may our eyes be set on Christ so that we may finish well and live a life of victory and overcoming the things before us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you share in this prayer with me? Lord, here we are. We have heard your call. Help us to respond to you anew this day. May we be strengthened and encouraged to follow you with courage and with boldness and with perseverance to continue in this faith race that you've called us to do. We give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. Will you stand with us as we will sing our hymn, They'll Know We Are Christians by
My friends, the race is going. So let us go with faith as we follow Christ into this world. May we go with the light of Christ that shines brightly so others can see Christ in our lives. And as we look to Christ, know that the Holy Spirit is there guiding and leading you and encouraging you along the way. Go out into this world and make a difference for Christ. And have a great week, and we'll see you next week. God bless you. Just to let you know, Bruce is in the back, and um, Mrs. Kuchana is in the back there for the soup orders as well. So thank you, and God bless.